Good morning, everyone. Mike here with the National Weather Service in Wilmington, North Carolina. It's Thursday, September 5th, and it's about 2 o'clock in the morning, and we're continuing to track Hurricane Dorian as it arrives off the Carolina coast today. As of this morning, Hurricane Dorian was located just to the south east of Savannah, Georgia, moving north-northwest at 7 miles per hour with a maximum sustained wind speed of 115 miles per hour, making it a Category 3 hurricane. As it approaches the South and North Carolina coasts, we are expecting it to weaken just a bit as far as wind speed is concerned uh, to a Category 2, but we're still expecting major impacts with high wind, uh, life-threatening storm surge potentially along the coast, as well as flooding rainfall, isolated tornadoes, and very, very rough surf at the area beaches. The latest track here has not changed a whole lot as the hurricane is expected to move into the South Carolina area later this morning and just off shore of Charleston by late to uh, late morning to early afternoon and that's when the heavier rain will start to creep in for northwest South Carolina. The storm will continue to move into the North Carolina area now for the afternoon uh, tonight and into the evening bringing lots of heavy rainfall across the area into the evening and late evening hours tonight including overnight into the early morning hours Friday. And the storm will eventually start to move towards the Outer Banks region for early Friday morning towards sunrise with some lingering rain for Southeast North Carolina, but the impacts will start to leave by noon or so Friday. One of our very big concerns is the heavy rainfall that will be associated with Hurricane Dorian where we're expecting anywhere from 8 to 10 inches of rainfall along the coast with local amounts up to 15 inches in the heavier areas of thunderstorms and the rain bands from the hurricane. The further inland you go towards I-95, we're looking anywhere from 2 to 6 inches of rain, which can still cause flooding concerns, but the main concern for flash flooding is along the coastal counties for South and North Carolina, with impacts being closed roads and potential for washed away roads as well. Another big concern is the maximum sustained wind speeds with the hurricane passing so close to the shoreline. Category 2 wind speeds could be experienced in the waters just offshore. The coastal counties uh, here in red can see anywhere between 60 and 80 miles per hour sustained wind speeds with higher gusts of course. The further inland you go we will see tropical storm force winds along and east of I-95 and it will be a breezy day. Uh, to the west of I-95, but should stay below tropical storm force winds. As the hurricane approaches here early Thursday morning and through the day, we can see very high waves offshore anywhere along the coastline between 12 and 15 feet in height. And the further you go offshore as the hurricane passes, we could see anywhere from 15 to 20 here. And further offshore towards where the eye will pass, we could see waves even as high as 40 feet. So very high surf at the beaches today, very dangerous as far as rip currents are concerned, and very rough navigation expected if you're traveling by boat. Another big impact from Hurricane Dorian will be the potential for life-threatening storm surge along our area coastlines. What we're looking at here is the reasonable worst case scenario as Hurricane Dorian passes Thursday into Friday. So let's start by looking at Georgetown, South Carolina and surrounding area communities for the coastline here where we could see anywhere from 9 to potentially 13 feet of storm surge above ground level, which is a lot of very dangerous water coming in as Hurricane Dorian passes. If we move up the coastline here towards off the coastline of Myrtle Beach and North Myrtle Beach and surrounding communities, we could see anywhere from seven to nine feet above ground level of storm surge. As we move into North Carolina here and up towards the uh, Curie Beach, Carolina Beach areas, Oak Island and other Brunswick County beaches, we're looking at between five and seven feet of uh, above ground level storm surge. And then off of the New Hanover and Pender beaches, we could see locally seven to nine feet of above ground level for storm surge. So a very potentially life-threatening situation here as Hurricane Dorian approaches along the area coastlines with very rough surf, uh, rip currents, and very high flooding coming in from the storm surge. 
Here are the key takeaway messages for Hurricane Dorian just to wrap up with high impacts today with power outages possible, down trees, and some structural damage as well with the high winds we're expecting. Storm surge along the uh, coastlines and rough surf and rip currents are possible. So just a bad day to be on the coast and along area beaches. There's a slight risk for isolated tornadoes with the storm as well as flash flooding possible with the amount of rainfall we're expecting. If you're watching this information uh, later on today after 2 p.m., it may be outdated. So please monitor the latest forecast updates at weather.gov and click on the map for your location or you can search the National Hurricane Center's webpage for the latest updates on Hurricane Dorian. For all of us here at the National Weather Service in Wilmington, please stay safe today.